Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Bokin Tinfim. Over the weekend, I picked up Ita Fram's debut novel titled The Woman is No Man. And oh, I can, while reading the book, I felt so much anger. The first time I stumbled on this book, I was drawing because of its title, and I, I just wanted to know what the, what it was all about. And <laughs> reading it, I felt it was not just, just great anger mixed with sadness, mixed with just a lot of emotions at once. Well, Itaf is a Itaf is a Palestinian American author, and she really has my attention, honestly. Although when I was reading this book, all I could feel was anger, deep anger. Because the story tells us about three generations of Palestinian women. One is Isra, the mother of Dea, then Farida is the grandmother to Dea. Dea is the... Isra is the daughter-in-law to Farida. So, it's more like a grandmother, mother, and daughter ten. And each chapter opens with the title, with a title, and the title happens to be the names of the one of the women. And the story is told from the point of view of each of the women. And the story is in a way that there's a flow whereby you can tell or in the previous chapter, the second the chapter after every chapter tries to tell you, okay, this is what influenced this particular thing we read just now and there's this sort of continuity and the, write, the author employed omniscient narrative My, the description of this book which really drew me in I from the prologue there's a part on the prologue I'd like to read to you that really made me say okay I'm going to read this book it says um, where I come from we have learned to conceal our condition we have been taught to we have been taught to silence ourselves that our silence will save us. It is only now, many years later, that I, I know this to be false. Only now, as I write this story, do I feel my voice coming. This household is that Israel is married into is a traditional house, household to the core. They like to uphold their Arabian ways, and it's in a way that it's, it, it's choking in a way that you do not have a choice as a woman and even a man because this part this book it doesn't really tell about oh oh look at women women are so um women are so oppressed no it doesn't show the oppression of men as well honest it doesn't it doesn't show the oppression of men how the men in the house wanted more as well but they couldn't because that's the way society wants it to be and that's how it's supposed to be you know when you know that okay this is not right but I have to do it anyway because this box that society has fashioned for us, we have to stay in it. We have to uphold it. And it's annoying. And there's the epigraph in the book is um, coined or gotten from Maya Angelo and Audrey Lord. And Maya Angelo's quotes, quote says, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you where all your guts and all your feelings just tell you you have to tell this story because people need to know it because I, not until I read, it, I read this book I don't think I've read any book about um, that is set, that was partly set in Palestine or have loads of um, culture in it that's Arabic and or that tells of this kind of traditional household I don't think I read any book like this before and that's the beauty of books. You get to know a lot of things and see and just know how much stories are so connected. And from Audrey Lord, it says, I write for those women who do not speak, for those who do not have a voice because they, are, they were so terrified because we are taught to respect fear more than ourselves. We have been taught that silence will save us, but it won't. That's why I said I felt so much anger in this book because Everyone was just ha carrying this weight on their shoulder that was unnecessary. They just needed, most of the time in the book, everybody was just yearning for freedom. That, that level of choicelessness, you just ran through the book. That's why I said I felt, not only did I feel angry, I felt so sad. Like, I could just feel that pain because the women in the book, most of the women in the book, they love to read. 
Israel was a 17 year old girl who was taken away from her family in Palestine and had to move to America. A place you have never been to before. Married to a man that you don't even know. You just go there and you have to be his wife, birth children for him and take care of the home. Okay, it's even worse that you have to live with your father-in-law because living in America is not so easy. So you have to, there's this, you have to be with the family, in the family house. You, she has to live with her mother-in-law, Farida. That's Farida, that's the matriarch of the house. This woman carries a lot on her shoulder and she has taken it her, upon herself as a duty to uphold every traditional attitude that places women a certain way and men a certain way. And you will not really blame her because most people believe that that's the way things should be. And now Israel is a girl who loves to read, but she can't read because why are you reading? And there's this belief that, okay, and it, there's this belief that, okay, you're filling your head with nonsense. And by nonsense, they actually mean, oh, you're going to find out the truth that there's more to life. And there are women who have said no to a lot of things and they have attained a certain level of peace or freedom. So the fact that books are censored from the women, it was for a reason. Even apart from Israel, there's another character in the book, Sarah. Farida birthed three sons and a girl. And this girl it was like a bone or a torn in the flesh of Farida because she would not listen. She did not want to get married. She wanted to go to college, but oh, you can't go to college, you're a woman. What's the need? That's a waste of money. You have to get married so that you can go to go leave the house. You're seen as a poet and once you get a certain age. Which is a very sad thing, honestly. And okay, so Sarah loves to read, and she can't read as well. Her mother is always yelling. Once you come back from school, you can't even go and do your 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 homework because you have to go to the kitchen and work. <laughs> then okay, not only okay, now Israel loves to read, but she can't read. They are um, Sarah as well. Then now Daya is born, and Daya also loves to read as well. The role of books is so important in this um, book that I, I, in a way that I loved so much because it books have are so powerful, so so powerful, and you can tell the way from the way these women were voracious readers and how much outlook or how they saw life was totally different from how Farida saw life. Although Farida knows these things, but what was she to do? I I, I did not really blame her entirely, especially when. I got to the chapters where she was telling her own side of the story or where the story was told from her point of view you will see that there was a lot of things that the woman had pain for and the fact that okay this happened to me it's my duty to uphold it although that's not the right thing entirely that's not entirely the right thing to do but it happens it's, it is what it is it's what society has said should happen so there's this need to uphold it so, there are a lot of things in this book that were sad to me because the fact the one the one thing that was so sad for me was I don't know how to, how to say it, but or what word to describe it is the fact that girls are not needed when when a girl is born and although many people would say oh no it happened in the past nobody's saying that that's nonsense it's a lie and. One thing is that I love so much is how much stories are so connected. It transcends boundaries, it transcends um, cultures. There's this connection in the world. And whether you like it or not, maybe if your mindset is not like that, then good for you. That's very good. And I'd love to meet you. But there are people who would prefer to have male children, per se, because you have to, to uphold the family name. And that just adds around nonsense. In African society, where I'm from, I'm from Africa, I'm from Nigeria, people still believe this. And the other time I was speaking with someone last year, 2019, and the person had the same mindset. I spoke to somebody in 2018 and he had the same mindset. And when Israel was battling with that issue where she had four females and she was seen as an idiot that she could not give birth to boys 
Oh, she has filled the family. Ahmed as well has a lot of pressure on him. He's the first child and he had to put food on the table. What I love about this book so much is that it did not tell only one story that okay, only women are oppressed. No. It told of, it told the story of how men are oppressed as well. It's it, from the point of view of, because as soon as I mentioned narrator, you can tell that the men were kind weight on their shoulders that no like you know that kind of thing that just when it, there's the saying that um we're swallowing panado for another man's headache and the the, the another man's headache we're talking about now the man in this quote for me is society because you just make up this thing on our head okay this is how it's supposed to be i leave my house from the front door so anybody that leaves their house on the back is an idiot and that's how it's supposed to be no so there's just a lot and i know that a lot of women still feel this way still have this feeling of helplessness so they find out that oh they give it to a female and they'll be like oh my god i feel but it's important because this book it really taught me the importance of reading and not only reading but traveling and getting to understand a lot of things and opening your mind to new things it's very important to say no it's very important to say this is what i want twice is important this life and people need to understand that they have a choice that's what the book really taught me so if people could read and open their mind to new things i think they would i think they would solve a lot of problems because there are people dying, uh, spiraling into depression because of things that are unnecessary, in my opinion. So, that's just it. I love this book so much. I, I don't think there's any bad word I have about this book. When I read it, that was just so quiet. <laughs> I, I was just going, I was frowning a lot. Because I, I've just been like, how does this make sense? Why would you do this to someone else? How can you just hold someone back saying don't do this, don't do that, you're not supposed to do this, you're supposed to do that. How do you even say that to somebody? Like I love to run or I love to take my bath or I love to run. I, I, I don't know. Like when you don't have a choice, that thing of choicelessness is a very bad thing. I don't even know how much it, that thing is bad but it's not. I really need to I get to see that everyone needs a choice. Everyone needs a choice and hopefully you choose the right path. That's just it. Hopefully you choose, choose the right path. I don't have any bad word to say about this book. The whole book was well written and the, cha and the chapters were really straight to the point. No big English. No, no, there was no verbosity or uh, over, they're not overladding us with anything. It was just a smooth ride for me. And the chapters were quite, were not so long or broad. The, the, the author did well to always just hit it in the head. And there was some sort of suspense in every chapter that led to another chapter. And from that second chapter, you get to have clues or you get your answer immediately. So I don't have any barriers there, but if I was going to read this book, I'm going to read it four or even five because it's well written and it's a very simple book and it, it, it's wholesome so there's no one and it, it was like a, a teacher for me so I appreciate this book a lot and it was time well spent I recommend it for anyone, everyone, everyone out there if you need to foil some sort of anger for change if you need to know or get an insight of what it is like stepping out of the society and just seeing things from another perspective maybe you have been looked seen it the wrong way so just step out step out and get to be the story stories are very good teachers and they just give you this sort of insight that is needed so i i would recommend it for you if you're looking for something if some sort of fresh narrative if this book is yes it's a good one it's a good one it's time was spent and it's nice so i really appreciate authors like Ita lot who will the pen and for change so kudos thumbs up and to all women out there and men who 
over the years have said no who are over the years have said to themselves this is not right who over the years ha have just wanted something fresh who are always breaking the box that society has fashioned for them who is always always changing and so badass <laughs> i commend them because they have been very close for change they have questioned the way things are and thankfully to them a lot of things have changed women for both women and men so those people who were able to say no we commend you because even not for you if if you hadn't said no a lot of things would have continued a lot of absurd selfishness would have come would have come, would have continued in life so thank you for saying no and with that i draw the curtain for this video please i am a booktuber <laughs> if you love my video or if you'd like to get more book reviews from me please please subscribe like share this video tell your friends about this channel and i would have so much appreciate it and please i would like to read your comments if you've read this book before what did you what did you think about this book and who was your favorite character of all and you no know, who whose character did, did you feel so much anger for on their behalf for me it was israel i felt so much anger for her on her behalf so much and it was just a lot so who's yours and if you've not read this book before please read it then come here and give and drop your comments or what you think or what you thought about the book until then please take care of yourself goodbye